Hi everybody, welcome to the 4,000 Feet A podcast. I'm your host Taylor Kelly and in this video today we're going to talk about Saint Vitalis of Gaza. Now Saint Vitalis of Gaza, he died in 625 AD and he's a lesser known saint and I think it is like that for a reason. I'm going to explain to you guys why because this story has been retold many many times however a lot of people have a hard time remembering his name and if you haven't heard it for the first time it's a remarkable story of this saint. So St. Vitalis of Gaza, uh, he was a hermit. He was a hermit until he was about 60 years old. And um, after he turned 60, he went to the city of Alexandria and just started doing normal day jobs. Now these normal day jobs um, consisted of a lot of labor. And what he would do is that all the money he earned, he would spend it at the brothels, right? Um, now, as you can imagine, when you see a priest taking their money and spending it at a brothel, it's a little, it raises an eyebrow, like a lot of people question it, and they did. A lot of, a lot of Christians in that area were very, were very concerned, and they were very, um, they were quick to admonish him and tell him that he's a, he's a sinful man for doing this, which in the eyes of the public, that makes total sense. Like wh when you see a priest walking into a, um, you know, a place of prostitutes, you're probably going to have those same initial reactions. And they even asked the bishop, like say, hey, you need to excommunicate this man because he's doing evil things. And... By the grace of God, the bishop didn't, and I'm explain why. So, when Saint Vitalis was visiting the uh, the brothels, he would stay there for days and nights. And one day, you know, as he was, you know, as he was walking on the street, um, people were so angry and so mad at him that they killed him. They they straight up killed him and they murdered him in the street. And this is a profound lesson because here's what happened later when they when they had his funeral all the prostitutes came to his came to his funeral and they testified saying this man was there for us he prayed with us he was trying to show us a better life um you know and people at the time they didn't understand the whole trafficking system so they didn't they didn't know this they didn't know that some women were actually forced there against their will but they condemned them anyway um but even then, you know, St. Vitalis was praying with them, trying to get them to repent, teaching them about the gospel. Uh, and that's what he did every night. That's what he did every night. Didn't do anything sinful. He was just preaching the truth to them because he felt like they needed it. And the reason why I want to share this story is because sometimes as Catholics, we get into this mode of judgment. We get this condemnation mode where we look at someone else and we look at someone else's life and we become like the Pharisee where we think like we're better. And, um, you know, if you take the advice and take the, the lessons of St. Vitalis, you're going to see that this man saw everyone as Christ saw, sees everyone. He saw them as child, children of God. He didn't see them as um, unrepentant, uh, evil people. What he did is that he saw them as people that needed help. He saw them in that way. And, you know, if you look at this saint and you look at the life of Christ, Jesus lived in a very similar way. He came after sinners. He went after Mary Magdalene. He went, he went after the apostles, uh, Matthew, a tax collector, people who looked upon um, his disciples with distaste and discomfort because they were all sinners, right? And sometimes I, I ask myself this too, like if there's someone that really bothers me, I gotta ask myself, well, is it because of something that I find in myself that's bothering me? And when I realize that, I really ask myself internally, I realize, oh, this is because I'm a sinner too right? Or I've dealt with something they're dealing with, right? Maybe, perhaps. Um, but the reason I want, I want to, another reason I want to share this message with you is that, is because if you look at this saint, you look at this, uh, this man who lived his life, um, you know, according to God and was killed for it, you know, killed on the street for um, preaching the gospel to, you know, people who needed it. You as a Christian, you're going to experience this too. Now, you may not be put to death, but it's always a good reminder to read the lives of the saints because in more ways than one, they've been ridiculed for their belief. They've been ridiculed for professing the truth. And we live in a world today where that's really, you know, it's frowned upon to be Christian, quite frankly, because the, most of society is not, um, is not conducive to Christian morality. Like that's just the way it is. And if you look at the lives of the saints, you're going to see that there's these holy people who stood up for what's right and they stood up for the truth, even to the point of death, which is why, you know, one of the big reasons why I stay Catholic is because of the lives of the saints, right? Now, I got to say this for any Protestants watching, you know, we don't worship the saints. We don't, we don't ask them 
uh, we don't praise them in a way that we praise God, right? What we do though is that we do look at saints for example. We look them as a way to inspire us. We look them as as role models for us to follow. Now you might be wondering, well, why not just go to Jesus directly? I hear that a lot. A lot of people say, you know, why don't you just pray to Jesus directly? You don't need Mary. You don't need you know the saints. You just need Jesus directly. Well, here's why you know we we pray to the saints, right? And by, by pray it doesn't mean worship. It just means ask. Right? Just like if you and I, um, maybe you have a family member who's sick and you ask me to pray for them, right? You, we probably all have done that, right? Where I, you know, I'll tell my friends like, hey, pray for me, right? Or pray for my family or pray for my sibling or pray for my niece or nephew, right? We all say things like that. You know why we say them? Well, because we know that prayer can be communal, right? One person's prayer is good, but so does another person's prayer, right? And another person's prayer, another person's prayer. And in fact, when you pray to the saints, when you ask them to pray for you, right? You're asking someone who is very, whose prayer is very efficacious. Because here's the thing, a saint is perfectly aligned to the will of God. They are in heaven. So if I ask Saint Vitalis of Gaza to pray for me, um, you know, I'm asking someone who's a very, very holy person. Um, and in fact, I would pray for humility because this man lived it. Pray, pray uh, so for St. Vitalis to um, help you understand humility the way he did, right? The way he did. Because, you know, every single saint you look at, including St. Vitalis, had an attribute of Christ, maybe more than one. They had a very specific virtue that God wanted to uh, show. The very specific, just like you and me. Like, there's a, if there's something that you're struggling with, maybe there's a vice that you struggle with, God allows you to have that vice, allows you to deal with the temptations of that vice because he wants you to overcome it and glorify him by overcoming it, right? So if you have a pride, if you have a vice of pride, maybe you have a lot of pride, if you overcome that, right, through virtue, you know, through prudence, through temperance, through, through those good things, that's going to glorify God more, right? And every single saint has, they, they walked in the imitation of Christ. They really did. And and by looking at the saints, for examples, it kind of helps us understand in a in a way that's um, unique, unique to a particular saint. Because no saint is the same. You know, every saint has a different, um, you know, has a has a different kind of uh, way they live their life. And sometimes, if you look at another saint, you might relate to them more than another. Right? That's the way. At least that's the way I thought of it. So. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this story. Hopefully you found it helpful. And just remember, just as a lesson for everyone to know, um, you know, we never know what someone's going through. We really don't. And one of the things that to ask for in prayer, at least this is what I do, is I try to look at things the way Christ looks at them. So if I'm looking at someone who is maybe objectively committing sin, I'm not going to judge. I'm going to look at and see, I'm trying to look at them with the way that Christ looks at them right with compassion with pity with um wanting them to repent that's the that's really what you have to do and i know this is hard because sometimes we might look at things and uh, see the evil in them and it's hard to look at evil and uh, be okay with it not saying you should be okay with evil, but what you should do is always seek you know always the seek and the always seek the good for other people right always seek the good because um one of the best ways to live your life as a Christian is to live it like Christ did. Not just obeying the commandments, not just doing that, but actually living it out, which I think um, many of the saints do an, a fine job of giving us that example. We have so many examples to follow, um, which is, again, another reason why I'm, I remain Catholic is because of the saints, because there's so many examples of people who have laid there in their lives and um, done what is right regardless of what people thought. So hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See y'all soon.